bone we are. Lock us in stocks, throw stones at us, throw laughter our way. The caress of scorn will soothe when the rocks connect. Pray they hit our heart, not ghostly chambers. We look for the flesh-bound company of throbbing men and women. The soothing sound of talk at dusk, the fall of feet on grass, the breath of a whisper in our ear. When we took rest beneath the earth, we never ceased to want sweet life streaming up our nostrils. Pulling this coupling apart, as gaping as the mouth of chaos is the turning down of the Pullman birth. In the tragic night, he's left his wife, huddled by the radio. It was a parting long in coming. Often they had driven to the mountains, walked in the dense forest, until unknowingly they slowly sank in quicksand. As they were sinking, they prayed for each other, like praying mantises in the brief night till the endless morning of disgust. There are no tears on her face as she hums when the cat comes back and picks lint off her dress by the light of an expressive bowl. She wanders outside, takes off her dress and lies in the grass and prays. He reaps in the Pullman, pulling him far away from his sinking wife. He wanders to the eating car, chews on his memories, he flicks his lighter, mirrors the flame off his glasses to imagine what to do. In his birth, he finds sinking earth, and he prays for his wife. During the fifth today, I determined to rip the tube apart and burn the petals as I burn remembrances of yesterday when a 17-year-old girl disdained the silence of a city elevator and slyly stated, I cut the cord, so kiss me instantly or never. I kissed her coldly, like snow, untrusting of the ground. The doors opened at level one. She pinned this tulip to my lapel, and she giggled, for the fifth today. <laughs> Battling alone. A rocket tore through my house yesterday, shearing off my third floor. Is this the beginning of the war, as vivid as a movie? In later years, when I am burnt from the offending fire, will I place a piece of shrapnel on the mantelpiece, show slaws in the dark to my wayward children who do not want to understand what shakes their father like a bomb. When I show the slide of crackling Switzerland and it gushes in my throat, will it feel so to my girl? When I tremble like a palsied hand, recount of vine bread swimming at Crystal Lake, when I tell the terrible beauty of the mountains of Switzerland, my children have left the room. As silent as the, as the depths, there were crystals in her hair as she came to the door at noon. She carried an explanation in her hand, a staff as tall as herself. It spoke for her like a brother. She had swum the English Channel to prove that life was conquerable. She did not want to wear dim party dresses on the subway of New York or call an unanswering phone. But life could be put in its place beneath the brine. The push to French shore made her cry newly. She swam to Paris up the streets until at a cafe, doing the breaststroke, she cried, I have not long, I have not long. She swam as alone as an unanswering phone, which swimmingly rings in her ear, 
so swimmingly, so swimmingly, she can't fear. The smell of the truth. I fell into a hole today. I traveled long and deep into a terrorist meeting. I listened to their arguments for the overthrow of bad government. They were fired up to preach the Molotov gospel. They were missionary men and women. A leader named Tom told of when a baby chick is separated from his mother. These were the pangs he felt for the poor of this country as when a birch tree is ripped by the rich man's axe. Such was Tom's anger. And Tom advocated burning the rich men and from their ashes building a garden where the poor could smell the truth. Confide in the night. A dog yelping in the dark by the bank of the river makes me want to squeeze to the bedroom wall. How night tastes like ice. I desire to melt into the recesses, to dissolve in a chute in a central part of the house, and fritter about, make popcorn while my parents sleep, talk to the cat about what it's like on the dark highways of the unbelievers. Does he remember in Egypt when he was worshipped, the cat lies on his back, points his paw to the tuna fish. I turn from his plea to out of doors. As I recede down the street, I yelp in the dark, and the dog yelps back. He's chained to a stump by the river. We make a pact to be cohorts for the midnight hours until we are mastered by the day. off a mirror captures something in me, the burning through to the other side. How foreign and familiar this glassy intrusion is. It is my center of weeping. In there I have learned of sadness, to gauge the pulse of anguish, to kiss the open wound. I walk gently over fresh graves in my friend's eyes hum the tune of the steadfast as the floodwaters near. I spin the tumblers of entrance, blast the safe, extract my golden tears. Water chimes, drop with drop, cascades down and through my chest. It infuses me with the movement of a river flowing through me, through me weeping. And finally, a savage question. A tiger loping down a Cape Cod beach stops to converse with a cubby of middle-aged men. The tiger says, yes, life is off in the jungle, but you must go straight like a bullet through a pillow. Joe asked the cat, how do you satisfy your lust? My lust for the raw air of the jungle is never satisfied. The burning scent of tension, the jangle of the jungle light, the piercing whispering singers stretch top my whispers. But you must feel out of place on the beach. I can talk of matters of the heart. Don't men count the creature who truly hunts the naked meat, who plans his approach and makes his fangs count? You pad your paws with a difference. We are here to soak the sunlight, 
appreciate the beauty of the fleeting thigh. Exalt desire, not savage the bone. Thank you. Thank you.